So we've got the beautiful Morgan sitting in its environment. Now we need to have a look at how the paint is going to reflect the environment. So pull up the environment dialog box. That JPEG is the one that you brought in earlier. Open up the materials editor and then just drag and drop that JPEG across into the blank space of the materials editor as an instance. Okay. These things you can just drag around. Um, you can double click. That's going to expose the properties of that bitmap. If you double click the image itself, it just makes it a bit bigger so you can see what, uh, what the image is. Now if you shift and left click and drag, you'll make a copy. And we need two copies of this thing. This one's going to be the background. So that's the image that we can see in the background of the viewport. This one is going to be the environment. So this is the thing that's going to cause all of the lighting and the reflections. So the environment is set as a spherical background and the background image itself for the viewport is mapped to the screen. Now, if you create a standard mental ray environment background switcher material, what that's going to do is it's going to give Max uh, a background image and an environment. And then it can use both of those if you drag and wire that back into the environment map something that it can use for lighting the scene and displaying the background at the same time. So we'll just check the settings here. Now, just take my word for this for a second. The output, if you set this up to, I don't know, maybe two and a half, um, this brightens the image. So this is going to brighten the reflections on the uh, bodywork of the Morgan. So what we need to do is have a quick look, see how that renders. It, probably isn't going to be perfect. Remember, we haven't had a look at shadows and things like that just yet. So we'll render that up. And you can see that the Morgan's now beginning to look reasonably good. There's a bit of reflection going on there. You can see a bit of the um, concrete reflected in the side of the car. Uh, we could go and brighten this up a little bit further. Maybe, I don't know, four and a half, five. Let's try it at four and a half and re-render that. And that's beginning to look a little bit better. Uh, not too keen on things like the tires and the reflections going on there yet, but we'll tidy that up in a second. Now, if you went to the same website that I did and got your background images, you probably also downloaded a bunch of other files, things like these uh, spherical environments. And there's one there called an EXR. OK, this is a spherical environment open EXR file. So I'm just going to swap that out for our environment and reflections map. OK, we'll just pop that wired up to there. We'll change it so it's spherical environment. And uh, we'll just go down and perhaps have a look at how that renders. Those two little people standing hand in hand is a clone of the render window or the frame buffer, as it's called in Max. Just enables you to see a comparison with what you had before and what you've just achieved. So I think you can see there that adding that opening XR file is making a dramatic difference to the way the vehicle looks. Even the tires and the mudguards are beginning to look much better.